All right, let's get practicing in QuickBooks Online. Grab the link below so that you can follow along. Today we're gonna to be walking through invoicing a billable expense with markup. This comes from section one, lesson seven of our Fast and Easy QBO Advanced Level Certification course. You can find out more information about it here. And if you would like access to tons more free hands-on exercises using QuickBooks Online, we'd love to have you join our free Facebook group, the QBO Gym Locker Room. You can find out more information right there and sign up actually. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. As usual, we're gonna start in the sample company. If you don't know how to get your free QBOA account or how to access the sample company, of course, links for all of that are below as well. All right, so here we are in our sample company. Let's go ahead and read through the scenario. Craig has contracted with Craig's Landscaping Services to do some work in her yard. She decides she wants a rock fountain with a cherub. Craig sells rock fountains all the time, but the cherub is an unusual request. He will have to buy it from Tim Phillip Masonry and then add it to Kate's bill. He plans to charge her 10% more than he originally paid. How would you set this up? So in the last exercise, we, uh, Tim bought, or Craig bought something and then just charged the client exactly what he paid for it. This time he's gonna charge more than what he paid for it and that's called a markup. So in step one, the first thing you have to do is you have to turn on markup, okay? This is the amount that, charge will, that Craig will charge over and above what he paid for the items. So we're gonna click the gear icon and select account and settings. Click the gear icon, go to account and settings. In step two, we're gonna click the expenses tab and then click the bills and expenses section to make it editable. Let's just do that much. So here I am in account and settings. I'm gonna select the expenses tab and you'll notice that when I move my cursor, each of these different sections is highlighted. What you need to do is just kind of click in the section and that opens it up and makes it editable. I'm going back to our exercise. Um, we're gonna check the markup with a default rate of, and then enter 10 for 10%. Then we're gonna click save and then done. Okay, so right in here, we're gonna check this box, markup with a default rate of, and then we're gonna put in 10%. Okay, then I'm gonna click save. After you click save, you always wanna wait for a moment. Sometimes when you click save, you have the, uh, the, comp the QBO has to kind of refresh. It didn't so much in this one, but then we're gonna click done. My point is you, you don't wanna hurry when you make changes in account and settings. You wanna make it, give it a chance to actually make that setting change. Okay, so now we're gonna go to step three. Now that markup is set up, it's time to record the original purchase from Tim Phillip Mason. Remember, he's got a rock fountain and he's got that cherub. So we're gonna click plus new and select expense. Back in our uh, exercise, step four in the payee field, we're gonna select Tim Phillip Masonry. Let's just do that much. Tim. Philip Masonry, okay? Now, if you are doing this exercise right on the heels of that previous exercise, we've already added the purchase order. If I am doing this exercise in a fresh, uh, in a fresh session of the sample company, so I have this pop up again, um, if you're doing it again right on the heels of that other one, you're not gonna have that pop up, but you will see um, in the expense, it'll show up the rock fountain right here. Okay, just because that was the previous expense uh, for Tim Phillip. Going back to our exercise, step six, mark the rock fountain billable and Kate Whelan as the customer. Okay, so we're gonna go in here, we're gonna mark that billable, and then we're gonna say Kate Whelan is the customer, okay? Now, you'll notice right here that it says the markup is 120%. Okay, so that's not the 10% that we put in. This item, this right here, this markup, comes from the difference between the cost 
and the sales price that are put in the products and services. So I'm just gonna show you real quick. This isn't in the exercise, but I'm gonna just show you real quick. Um, I'm gonna go to products and services. If I can load up the sample company right here. Oops. There we go, this is just a duplicate of that. So I'm gonna to go to um, my products and services list. Again, this part isn't in the exercise, I just wanna show you so you know what I'm talking about. And then here's our rock fountain. So here is the cost, $125, and here is the sales price, which is $275. And that is pre-coded into, uh, into this product and service. So if I edit it, you can see right here, here's the sales price, and here is the cost. And the difference between this, these two numbers is 120%. That's why, if we go back to our expense, that's why this says 120% already, okay? Because it that's how it pre-calculated. It's not using the number that we set up in account and settings, okay? All right, let's go back to our exercise. <clears throat> All right, next we will record the purchase of the cherub. Since this is not a regular item that Craig buys and sells, it will not be in the products and services list and will therefore not be available in the items grid you will use the category details grid for this instead. Okay, so what I'm talking about here, this is the category details grid. This is the item details grid. This grid is only for products and services that are in the products and services list, okay? So, uh, then the cherub's not gonna be in there. So in the category details grid, add job expenses, job materials, fountain and cart garden lighting as the category and cherub as the description. Okay, you're gonna note that there are two similarly named accounts. I'll show you that in just a second. So if we go in here and I just type lighting, then you'll notice that there are two very similar accounts. One that has fountains with an S, oops, that's not the one I wanna dislike. One that has fountains with an S and one that has, has no S. Okay, this first one is an expense account. The second one is an income account. I just know that because I went in and looked at it, I figured it out. So what you wanna use, because this is an expense, you wanna use the one that's tied to the expense account. If you use the other one, you will get an error message when you try and save this expense, okay? So in the description, I'm gonna put cherub. It's very important that I put in a description when I have a billable item that's in the category details field. I'll show you why that is in just a second. Uh, but here we're gonna enter, so in the description, oh, I have that twice. In the uh, description field, we have uh, cherub. In the amount field, we're gonna enter 100. Okay, we're gonna mark this as billable, and guess who it's gonna be billable to? Kate Whelan. Okay, and notice this time, the markup is 10%. That's the amount that we put in um, account and settings in that very first step, okay? So that's where this one came from. All right, so next up, we're gonna say, okay, so that came from there. We're gonna click Save and Close. All right, so now that we've recorded the billable expense, let's go and invoice Kate. Okay, so steps 12, finally we'll create the invoice for Kate Whelan. Click plus new and select invoice. In the customer field, select Kate Whelan. Okay, and notice, both of those popped up in the drawer, the rock fountain and the cherub that we just purchased from Tip, Tim Phillip. I don't wanna get ahead of myself, here we go. Note that the two items have popped up in the drawer. We're gonna click add all. Right here, click add all, okay? And notice a couple of different things. First, notice that the cherub does not have a, uh, a product or service associated with it. This is not something that Craig typically sells, so you're not gonna have anything there. It's very important when you have a billable expense that's not an item, 
that you put in the description what it is because otherwise when it comes across, it's not gonna be here. So it's, it's super important that we added that cherub. Another thing notice that you have on here the markup, okay? So here is the 120% markup for Rock Fountain and here is the 10% markup for Cherub. And notice it says, whoo, very faint, it says your customer won't see this. Okay, let me go back to the exercise because I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so this is what I just pointed out. Cherub does not connect with the product or service. Um, QBO indicates the markup. It says the customer won't see this. Okay, so we can actually see what the customer sees by clicking print or preview. Okay, so you're gonna go in this black bar click print or preview and select print or preview right here. And this is what Kate will actually see on her invoice. It'll just have the totals here. Sorry, my little cursor won't follow me there. Um, <laughs> this is what she will actually see. There's no indication of a markup. All right, and that's it for this exercise. Next up, we're gonna be talking about partial invoicing. See you there.